What's up, Trojans? I just wanted to give my reaction, recap, review, and analysis of the Giants 2023 NFL Draft. Uh, and especially, I'm going to just focus on the first four picks the Giants made, uh, the last three picks in the seventh or in sixth rounds. Uh, you know, just depth players. Uh, I figure Joe Shane did great with them. I'm also going to figure that Joe Shane got some amazing undrafted free agents. You know, I, I think he's doing a great job. Uh, same with Brian Dable. Brian Dable's clearly helping, you know, uh, all the coaches, really. I mean, did you see Wink Martindale uh, when the Giants drafted Deontay Banks? Wink Martindale, I think, made that pick himself. He was so excited. Uh, and Brian Dable's making trades? I mean, sheesh. Uh, the entire staff is involved here. It's not just one guy. I'm sure Brandon Brown's right there, too. Brandon Brown, you know, he's hanging out. He's making picks as well. I don't know if he's solely making picks, but he's helping. He's right there. I, it really feels like a team effort from everything I've seen. All right, but anyway, night one, the Giants picking late in this year's draft. Uh, it was great because, you know, it's the result of doing good in the season, but it, it sucked because uh, I had to wait longer uh, to see what the Giants wanted to do. But uh, anyway, uh, it was great to see a lot of the other teams first. Uh, it was it kept me more engaged in the draft because every single move another team made ended up affecting uh, what the Giants could have uh, that in the available board. So uh, it kept me more engaged with the draft, and it was nice to see the climax of uh, some of the stories. You know, like oh well, the Panthers take Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. You know, they go with Bryce Young, and then the Texans get C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson. Uh, and I did not think Will Anderson was going to be the guy a team would want to trade up for, but he's a top-tier prospect for sure. Uh, wow. But then, uh, yeah, teams uh, drafted who they drafted. Uh, Falcons got B. John Robinson. I was excited to see that one. I was like, yeah, yeah, take him. Take him nice and early. Uh, hopefully the you know a move like that helps bring the running back position back to prominence because uh, I was seeing some stats, and they have not gotten a pay raise in years. <laughs> <laughs> they are the running back market is not doing so hot right now. So hopefully some attention can get back to these high end running backs. Sheesh. But then boards started to fall in a very weird way. We were at a point at I think like twenty where all of the wide receivers were still on the board, and a good number of the top ten corners you'd want the Giants to draft were on the board. Like Joy Porter made it to the second round for the Steelers to get him, but alas. Quentin Johnston goes, and the wide receivers start falling. <laughs> uh, Baltimore gets Zay Flowers. Very happy to see that one. I did not want the Giants to get Zay Flowers. And Jordan Addison goes. All the, all the wide receivers go. And then the Giants are left to trade up with the Jaguars to get Deontay Banks. Now, I'm under the assumption when you trade up one spot, giving up a fourth and seventh round pick, that you make that trade up because someone else offered that trade up. That is... That is just my guess there uh, because you, it's – okay, it's one of two things. Either the Jaguars said, hey, we have two guys – like you just call, right? Maybe you do some sort of like precautionary call like, hey, guys, uh, what are you thinking here? Because Joe Shane says he knows the uh, Jaguars general manager. Said that in a press conference uh, after night one or uh, after one of the nights of the draft. And so he knows him. It's like, hey, buddy, uh, what, what do you think with this draft pick, man? What are we doing? And the Jaguars are like, yeah, we got several trades. Uh, like 10 teams on a trip to get Deontay. Uh, probably not. It probably wasn't 10 teams. It's just a guess. But maybe a team or two said, hey, we're also looking to trade up, thinking of getting Deontay Banks. Joe Shane goes, oh, no. Well, you have a similar grade on like two guys maybe or like Deontay Banks. Uh, we'll just trade up. Uh, here, we'll give you a fourth and a seventh. Uh, trade up that spot and then you can get this other guy you really want. You know, you, you got to talk him into it, right? That or the Jaguars said, uh, or it's sort of the position I alluded to there. The Jaguars have two very similar graded guys on their board. Deontay Banks and one other guy. And so you figure that by you know, trading up, it's like, okay, yeah, the Jaguars say, okay, we'll give up Deontay Banks, the fourth and seventh is worth the one extra point in grade we have on Deontay Banks over another guy, and they trade back and get the other guy, or better yet for the Jaguars, they weren't even thinking about Deontay Banks, I forget who they drafted, I was still reacting to getting Deontay Banks, the Jaguars just didn't care, they're like, yeah, yeah, take Deontay Banks, give us a free fourth and a seventh, sure, you guys want to be impatient, by all means, go for it. But who knows? It's a fourth and a seventh. Even if the Jaguars swindled the Giants, it's a fourth and a seventh. 
Giants get Deontay Banks. As I said, I would be nervous if they drafted a corner, and I am. I am nervous because it is the New York football Giants drafting a cornerback in the first round of an NFL draft. It just doesn't sound right as of late. Now, hopefully he ends up being good. Joe Shane hasn't drafted a quarter a cornerback in the first round for the New York Giants before. So, be very interesting how this plays out. They clearly have high hopes for him. You don't trade up for a guy you're go you're iffy on, right? If you trade up for a guy, you you believe in him. Uh, so, hopefully Joe Shane uh gets this pick right. Uh corners, they take a while to develop. And it's going to be uncertain for a while whether this is a good pick. Unless, of course, he comes out like uh, Sauce last year and just gets Defensive Rookie of the Year. That would be amazing. Hopefully that happens. So, now on to the second round. Giants, again, they're just sitting there. They're just sitting there. I'm watching top-tier prospects go off the board in the second round. Like guys that should have been drafted in the first round. Teams start taking these guys. All good, Giants. Guys start falling, though. Guys I thought could have gone in the first round, they're falling. Guys like Trenton Simpson. Guys like John Michael Schmitz, who the Giants ended up drafting. The center. I I love that pick. Now, I was kind of hoping it would be Simpson, but I can see why they would go with John Michael Schmitz over Trenton Simpson there. I can really see that. Uh, We're shoring up that center position. Really getting a guy that's going to help our interior offensive line. And Joe Shane was bluffing all the time leading up to the draft on that. He was like, yeah, no, I'll start anybody there. Bredesen, yeah, I'll start him there. Lemieux, yeah, I'll start him at center. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's not all good now. Well, it is all good now. It's not all good on those guys starting center now. Giants got John Michael Schmitz, a center. I like the pick. Shores up our center position. Should hopefully help out Saquon Barkley and help out Daniel Jones. The entire offense should benefit off of this. I'm happy about it. Let's move on. So then in the third round, the Giants decide to trade up 16 picks, giving up about what they got from the Jaguars. Or no, about the same as they had to give up to the Jaguars. I think they gave up a fourth round and a third round to trade up the 16 picks. Not an extra third round. The third round used to trade up. Um, So I think it was a third and a fourth to get that third round pick higher up. Uh, I forget the team they traded with. I think it was the Rams. Uh, And they get Jalen Hyatt. All right. This one I have reservations about because, not because of Jalen Hyatt. I actually think Jalen Hyatt's a good receiver from everything I've seen at least. And I I think he's, he's gonna fit in well because he isn't just another slot guy. We have enough of those. Uh, So yeah, I think uh, this, it was a good move. I like it, but I don't love it. I would have loved it if they traded up and got Trenton Simpson. How was Trenton Simpson, a guy, a linebacker out of Clemson, really great measurables? My comparison, at least in the draft, would be Isaiah Simmons, another linebacker that I I felt like could have gone anywhere on the defense. Like, you get him in a defensive system like Wink Martindale's, I think Trenton Simpson would have been amazing in Wink Martindale's system. But instead, he goes to Wink Martindale's former team because the Giants didn't feel like drafting him, trading up in the third round. Now, it is the third round. I honestly don't understand why the Giants couldn't make another trade up. Trade up from next year. You think first round prospects are going to drop to the third round in a draft every single year? No. Trade up some freaking fourth round picks from next year and get Trenton Simpson now. Then you could have had four first round guys in this year's draft, but no, instead the Giants just settle for three because three's good enough. (laughs) But yeah, there were, uh, that's kind of crazy that the Giants got three guys that I think at all one point were mocked to the Giants in the first round. Pretty crazy. So I do like the move. I think Hyatt will fit in okay with the wide receiver group. He's not like a clone of Wandale Robinson or anything like Zay Flowers would have been. But he's also not Quentin Johnston who immediately pencils in as a wide receiver one. He's going to come in. He's going to be good. But my problem with the Giants wide receiver core right now is we have six to seven guys that I think are good wide receivers that are starting wide receivers. Um... I did a little bit more research. I remembered uh, we got Jamison Crowder uh, 
who also, I think, could be a starting wide receiver. So my list of starting wide receivers goes uh, Jamison Crowder, Wandale Robinson, Sterling Shepard. I think all of those guys would be competing for some sort of slot wide receiver position, in which case, hopefully, Jamison Crowder becomes a special teams guy, Sterling Shepard becomes the backup slot, and Wandale Robinson becomes the starting slot. That's how I would pencil it in right now. Then, wide receiver two, deep threat, Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt. Uh, Jalen Hyatt, ah. I think those two guys are deep threats, fast, shifty, wide receivers that, you know, you're throwing, a, you're throwing some solid passes to them. Hopefully they can catch it. Darius Slayton has had a, a drop issue uh, last season. But Darius Slayton's also a really good wide receiver that put up 700 yards last year. Cut out the drops, be a little bit more consistent with the route running. Darius Slayton would be a great wide receiver. Hopefully the two years, six mil a year uh, works out there. Net then competing for what I think will be the Giants' quasi number one wide receiver slot is Isaiah Hodgins and Paris Campbell. Now, that's how I draw it up. Uh, if that's how that plays out, well, you know, good for me on predicting. But it, it's just a weird setup, in my opinion. You don't have a single guy on this roster that you'll look at that guy and you're like, that is our number one wide receiver right there. You put two corners on that guy and still good luck defending it. I don't see that guy on this roster. Odell was that guy. Uh, and we really have not had that guy since then. We've had guys that we've put in as the number one wide receiver before. Guys like Isaiah Hodgins and Sterling Shepard that aren't wide receiver ones. I think Darius Slayton we put as like basically a wide receiver one at one point. Those guys aren't wide guaranteed bona fide wide receiver ones. I also don't think Isaiah Hodgins and Paris Campbell are. All of these guys though, however, are wide slot wide starting caliber top tier slot wide receivers or very good wide receiver twos. And we have a full roster of wide receivers that are this caliber of player. Like, it, great depth, honestly. If a guy goes down, hey, we have your clone as a replacement. But it's also not um, great for really taking the top off of a defense unless one of these guys really steps it up, which I hope one of them does. I hope by the end of the year, we're like, oh, wow, Paris Campbell is a freaking legend or Jalen Hyatt is a our next Odell. But as of right now, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a bunch of guys that are at about the same skill level. I feel like it's all just the same caliber of guy we have on this offense at wide receiver. Great depth, but yeah, there's no number one guy. And now going into uh, the final pick I want to go over, uh, the Giants got a running back gray in the fifth round. I like the pick. You didn't draft Saquon Barkley's replacement. You drafted another guy that is going to be depth at the running back position. Uh, from what I've seen, apparently a pass catching running back, which Saquon is that, but he, he randomly had drop issues last year. I don't know what that was about. Uh, but in 2018, the Giants used Saquon as a receiving back. But I feel like this coaching staff much rather prefers Saquon Barkley as a, well, a running back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the Giants seem to really want to completely offload that receiving back position. Um, I mean, I'm not a thousand percent against it, but at the same time, I think Saquon Barkley is fully capable of filling that role. But also, at the same time, you don't want Saquon Barkley on the field 100% of the time. He's going to get tired, and tired running backs aren't as good as full, you know, energized running backs. <laughs> uh, so, hopefully Saquon Barkley can get whatever rest he needs uh, in between drives and uh, during drives. To, to where every single time he takes a snap as the Giants running back, he's getting five yards. That would be amazing. Uh <laughs> But, yeah, so hopefully that works out. Um, and hopefully, uh, Joe Shane, since the draft was over, they were asking him about it. And he was a little bit more, um, you know, gleeful uh, about re-signing Saquon Barkley uh, because he had the one interview where he was like, yeah, yeah, screw Saquon, you know, we'll get to him later, you know, forget about it, right? He didn't say screw Saquon, but, you know, it, it was the last thing on his mind and uh, it was the first thing on everyone asking him questions mind, so... 
I, I think that combo didn't go well. And, uh, but now they asked him about it, and they're like, and he was like, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reconvene with Dexter Lawrence, I'll reconvene with Saquon Barkley, and we'll start negotiating again. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's about this point that uh, Joe Shane has nothing better to do than negotiate uh, with the guys already on the roster. And then hopefully he gets to take a little vacation before the season starts. So uh, that is my recap of the Giants draft picks. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I thought the Giants had a really good draft. It's just a shame they couldn't get Trenton Simpson or Quentin Johnston. But I don't think it would have been worth it to trade up uh, for Quentin Johnston if uh, Deontay Banks works out, of course. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully you know he does good with the Chargers, except when he plays the Giants. And I hope Trenton Simpson uh, does good on the Ravens, except when he plays the Giants. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's a shame the Giants really couldn't get Trenton Simpson uh, because he was actually very available for the Giants. But, oh well, I think the Giants got four great prospects in this draft, three really great prospects in uh, Deontay Banks, Schmitz, and Hyatt. And then I think Ray will be a solid uh, depth piece. And hopefully, uh, you know, some of the guys the Giants got in the 6th and 7th rounds can contribute in some way. But I really think the Giants have an insane amount of depth now. Uh, it's, it's crazy what one guy can do in two years to just create depth. Or really one year. Because last year, you know, it felt like we, we were, you know, walking on thin ice here. It's like, okay, one corner gets hurt and we're getting out of the bargain bin. Fortunately, a guy like Moreau was able to come in and fulfill a, a solid role as a corner. But let's not rely on, um, you know, undrafted guys working out. Let's, let's make sure we know who's going to be our corner at the start of the season. And then if an undrafted guy has to come in through some serious unforeseen circumstances, it works out. Anyway, that's all I got this time. See you guys in the next one. All that, you know, like, subscribe, comment. All that fun stuff. Share the video too. Apparently sharing is very important. Sharing is caring, really. Uh, all right. See you guys in the next one.